and welcome to the NAVS uh, channel. Thank you so much for being here with us today. My name is Slavika Bogdanov. I started this channel, Narcissistic Abuse Victims and Survivors, to bring more awareness, education, and tools to help you, of course, get out of any situation that might be endangering or uh, just survive the after effect and eventually, hopefully, thrive. I've found out that a lot of people have no idea what narcissistic abuse is. A lot of people never heard of it, don't even know it exists. So this channel is really meant to bring more awareness and education. In my, um, what I plan to do is also raise funds and create a foundation, a non-for-profit to basically help victims get out because a lot of victims are stuck and imprisoned in their horrible circumstances and also to bring them to a place of thriving through education and also grants to start small businesses. So thanks for being here. I have Martina with me today again. So hello, and thank you so much for joining me today on this call. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's really nice. So the reason why I thought we'd get back together is uh, we had a great call last time. I thought it was phenomenal. And, um, and I wanted to follow up, see, you know, see what your trajectory is as, you know, as you, as we get out of this feeling of victimization or surviving or where we're at. And there were a few points that we started discussing last time. And uh, I really thought about it hard. I really like put my thinking uh, hat on. And I, I think I have some answers. So first of all, um, tell me where you are at, at now in your process. What are the new things that are happening uh, in your thoughts or your experience? Uh, well, honestly, uh, in the past month, uh, I have been really dedicating myself to uh, actually rediscovering myself, uh, rediscovering my my life and uh, how things are uh, for me you know how I see them uh, especially because uh, it has been the first month and a half that I have been completely uh, nar narcissist free so uh, this may sound strange or something but I, I have been struggling with addictions my whole life and I honestly, when I found out, I, I told you last time that I actually find, found out or realized very recently that uh, what I have been experiencing was narcissistic abuse and also that I have been uh, in the role of uh, acting like a narcissist uh, as a consequence of not knowing any other type of behavior. Um, so I realized that in, in December, and I have been, uh, since then, this realization made it inevitable for, for those uh, relationships to kind of dissolve and change. And uh, in, at the beginning of the year, I have experienced actually like all the narcissistic uh, relationships that I had in my life, whether I was the nar narcissist in that, in the role of the narcissist or in the role of the victim, I like all of them uh, started falling apart. It, it seemed like at some point I was just watching it and I was thinking, this is, you know, this is incredible. This is not only my doing, it's like God's doing, you know, universe is, you know, having its fingers in this because all, all the, the relationships that I knew that they were not healthy and that I realized that are narcissistic started just falling apart. And in that moment, what happened inside of me was um, I started feeling, since I have been struggling with, with different addictions my whole life, uh, I realized that the feelings that I, have been, um, that I have been experiencing in that moment was really like I was addicted to something. So I, st I started feeling struggle inside of me. I wanted to keep them. I wanted to do something about it. I wanted to, you know, so I recognized these feelings, feelings from other addictions. And in that moment, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm just going to let it be. And I'm just going to observe it. And I'm not going to give in because it's obviously an addiction. So I'm, 
I just want to see what happens if if I just relax and if I respect what's going on. And if I am, what's gonna happen if I allow myself to love myself enough to just continue observing without needing to put my ego into play. Um, and that's what I did. And what happened was that all of the people that I was in a narcissistic relationships with, my narcissists and my victims, which as you know, is very hard as a victim to actually get out of that relationship. All of them closed the relationship by themselves. So what I realized is that I, I probably, I'm doing a lot of things in my life. I'm, I'm really, you know, putting my life together. So my focus is on, on some really important things for me, for example, my business and stuff like that. So um, I, I had the, the strength to kind of assist for them to, to uh, make a goal. I, I did to uh, know, how do you say that, to score? Like in football, to, to score. So I did not have the strength to score myself, but I realized that what came out of me spontaneously after that, after that realization was to assist for them to score and then to just respect it. So not, and this is something that I was never ever capable of for, to, to, to do before. I would just not have the calm inside of me to stick to the decision not to give in to that relationship, whether it was my decision or their decision. At some point I would uh, bring it back to life, always. I, I, I just couldn't stand it because it's an addiction. And now when I realize it, I, I just uh, I just calm myself down and I respected what was happening without, you know, uh, putting energy into it or anything. Um, and what happened is that all the relationships completely dissolved. And that has been one and a, uh, one and a half months ago. And it's a journey. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's great because now you have almost a clean slate, right? Now it's you beautiful. have this. It's yeah. beautiful. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's like I I actually I have been smoking since I was fourteen. I'm thirty now. Uh, I have been uh, addicted to. Uh, I, I have been binge eating since I was eighteen. Uh, I had phases when I was addicted to alcohol, uh, seriously, and I had phases in which I was addicted to different kind of drugs, seriously. Um, I know the feeling when you get rid of that, and I know the feeling when you don't, <laughs> and For the past month and a half, I can say that I I have never experienced um, this feeling, this level of feeling of freedom and love, actually. Um, it, it's, it's amazing and it's mind-blowing because I think this is the addiction that I have been having for the longest time. I agree with you. And you know, last time, um, one of the things, so I, then I have a question for you because it's it's been bugging me that thing you said last time. But um, we, since last time, we had a conversation where we were saying, you know, it's it can be boring to be in a quasi like normal relationship, loving and um, bec and, uh, and I'm glad you're, you're talking about this now because it is the same issue as being addicted where the addiction is exciting and you think not being in the addiction is boring. For example, like I've, I've, you know, I've been an alcoholic. So I, you know, let's take the example of alcoholism where you associate alcohol with the fun of going out, being, you know, extrovert and having, you know, hilarious fun and doing all sorts of crazy things. And then you associate the fact that 
if you don't drink, well, you won't go out or you won't dance or you won't be, you know, so, so it'll be become boring. And uh, a year and a half ago, I went out uh, to a bar with, uh, with a, uh, a person that was my neighbor and we went out and I was the only one dancing on the, I love dancing. And I was the only one that actually I made a joke because I was drinking a, I think I was drinking a soda or I don't know what. And I joke a lot about my own alcoholism. So I said, you know, I, I, I didn't drink enough to go dance. So I took more soda. And then I went dancing. I was the only one on the dance floor, which I always used to do when I was, dr you know, pissed drunk is to go dance no matter who was on the, the dance floor. And I danced like, I've never danced in a long time. And eventually everybody came dancing too. Um, but I realized, so it, it was a, 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 net, a false association I made between two things that had no connection of being associated. And so I think when you said last time, it, it can be boring to be in a normal relationship where there's no, you know, narcissism or abuse. I think it's a wrong association because it can be super excited and super passionate. And I think even potentially even more excited and even more passionate because there's never going to be that, especially if we lived it a couple of times, we already know what narcissistic abuse looks like. There's never going to be that, that manipulative game, you know, where you can actually have real fun as, as kids and love each other. So so yeah, I think once you get out of the, the more time you spent out of an addiction, the more you realize that you connected to things that actually had no point in being connected together, right? Like we connect food with comfort, we connect food with, uh, with you know, with not being bored or we connect food with uh, helping us get out of stress or we connect food with love or and then eventually when you don't have that pattern you're like well food is just food <laughs> it's not, not there's there's nothing <laughs> there's no connection you know so um so I'm glad that you're doing that I had a question since last week because it's been bugging me last time I mean is at some point you said I see when I drink tea, I sometimes see myself that I'm drinking tea like a narcissist. What does that mean? <laughs> what did that? You said sometimes I do things and I know I'm doing them as a narcissist. What does that mean? Does that mean that you feel your behavior is different or your position or the way you present yourself? Uh, it's um, it's how you view the world. Oh. It's how you view the world. So it's like um, I I don't know why it came to to my mind right now, but I I, I will just say it out loud. I I read somewhere um, in, in in some book that I was reading. There was a question like, do you feel that um, you are have you are watching the world through a camera? or that the world is watching you, that you are being watched through a camera. So are you in front of the camera or behind the camera? And that's very interesting. And I, um, it's kind of that, that kind of feeling when I said that I'm drinking tea like a narcissist or anything else, that you feel there is a, a difference in perception. Um, and I think in, in narcissistic uh in narcissistic patterns uh whether it's a, it's a narcissist or a victim there is this type of um this vision of the world that is as if you were always being watched if you are a narcissist you're always being watched to kind of pump your ego and if you're a victim you're always being watched because everything is wrong about how you are so you're super sub you're super self-conscious about everything that you do because you are thinking am i doing this right is this okay am i okay you know and on the other hand if if you shift to a narcissistic position 
um, it's kind of like, you know, it, it, you are looking for uh, validation and, uh, and admiration from everything or in everything. So you're almost doing things in a way that you admire yourself through it. And it's a completely, which by the way, I think comes from, from the same, like if you think about it from these two different perspectives, I feel that they come from the same point, which is not, um, not feeling um, really uh, worthy or not feeling, you know, uh, okay with yourself. So whether you are a victim or a narcissist, if you, if you bring it to the, to the starting point, it, to me, it seems like it comes from the same starting point, which is, um, I'm not good enough, maybe, or I'm not worthy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, uh, what I meant, uh, by, I, by that. I understand now. Yeah, it's brilliant. Actually, recently is very uh, funny. You mentioned this because recently I was going to do something that was very meaningful to me. And, um, and I was going to, and I, I don't want to get too much in the details, but I had to stop myself and really think, why am I doing it this way? I was going to involve someone in what I was doing. And it was to shine on them. And I really stopped myself to think, and maybe even to prove myself to them. And then I stopped and I said, why am I doing this this way? Why am I not doing, doing it for myself without having to shine on someone or prove to someone? Why don't just do this to do it for myself? Because it's my dream. It's what I want to do. And Nobody has to benefit from it. I don't have to do it for someone. I can just do it for myself. And I don't have to prove myself to anyone. And I can just do it because what the heck, I want to do it. And who cares, right? And it really like, and I also realized that it was a, like, I just, it was like the first time I realized that that was a pattern that I kept on repeating that behavior and I stopped myself at the right time. And I was, it was very liberating because it was like, I have the, I have the right, I don't have, I don't, I'm a super achiever. Everybody knows that, but the, now the super achiever is because it's fun. It's not because you know, I'm going to show off or because, you know, I'm going to prove something to someone and I'm going to show all these different, uh, it's more because I, I love the challenge and I love, you know, things that are just bring me like a real, I'm real competitive against myself because I just like to improve all the time. So it, it really, um, made me, and, and it's a little like what you said about, you know, the, the self-esteem and loving yourself enough that you are enough, just like that. You don't have to outperform someone. You don't have to, to be a narcissist to someone. You don't have, or you don't, you don't need to feel so dispowered, unpowered that you become the victim to someone. So um, there was someone in the group actually to the extreme that I was like in shock. Someone in the Facebook group said, um, what do you do when the guy sends you a, a picture of their intimate parts? I won't, I won't say it the way she said it, um, but you know, he is friends with your narcissist friend, but he refuses to admit his friends with the narcissist friend. And I read that and it was such a low vibe to the vibe where I was, right? Without judging that I thought, why do you even care? Why do you even bother? And how low must your self-esteem be that you even care that you received such a picture? 
like it's it's like the bottom of you know the bottom of the bottom of the behavior someone can have right sending a naked picture to you so so that made me realize that you know we're all on different journeys and what i felt regarding her the naked picture that somebody would send was really actually her saying i'm not worthy of someone loving me to that level to a high level of love where all of that horrible stuff does not exist so i think you're right i think it's really about learning self-love continuously right it's always about that yeah it's always about that and there is a um, it's like a continuum of um, you know worth and how how worthy we feel and how much we how much we are love how much we are capable of loving and how much we love the love that we are so it's kind of a, a process of of learning and more of um kind of mm, leaning into that so like um, you know letting go and and uh, allowing yourself to to really be who you are because in you know in in, in reality we are all worthy and we are all uh, love and uh, that's that's the that's our nature so we don't really have to do anything um but it is it is challenging to we are still living this physical reality so it is challenging to to uh, recognize and change the pattern the behavioral patterns that we developed and that's that's the that's what the tea is about because the tea is something that you would never ever think about the, how how do you drink your tea as a narcissist what does that mean you would never think of that. You would say maybe you talk like a narcissist or you do, you know, you re you relate to other people. But that's the thing because patterns like this enter in every pore of your being. You don't realize that you walk like that. You you think like that. You Your, your skin is like that. You drink tea like that. You do everything like that. The, not what you read, but the way you read is narcissistic. It's It's everywhere in your life. And you start, when you start seeing that, that means, so the moment when you start recognizing and, you know, to some people, this will make sense or to others that, so I say, oh, I drink tea like that because I know what that means for me. I can explain it. Maybe for someone it's going to be, uh, you know, it's not going to make sense. Something else is going to make sense to them. So that's good. Everybody has their, their own path and uh, also way of recognition, these patterns. But when you start recognizing these these patterns, that means that you started um, that you started differenti differentiating yourself from them, so separating yourself from them, and that you are able, and with time you are going to be more and more able to see them from the outside, so to observe them, which means that with time you are going to be able to let go, because as as long as you see them. You are able to, uh, as, as long as you are separated from them, you can let them go. If you cannot separate yourself from them, so if you don't even realize that you have them, that means that you consider them to be part of you. And narcissism is, in my opinion, not part of anyone. So narcissism or being a victim is not part of anyone. It's something that we learn. So um, behaviors uh any type of of behaviors that we learn in our life are just behaviors that we learned that's not our nature so we can reprogram okay. our minds exactly so we can reprogram our minds like we can um reprogram our behavioral patterns uh, the way we think the way we the emotions that we feel how we feel super important you get so, to yeah, that as, I, as soon as you separate. I, agree, um, I, uh, I I've been thinking about that uh, a lot. Um, last time you said something. Um, you know, do are we are we always going to, uh, or are we prone to attract more narcissistics in our life because we are in this pattern of narcissism, and 
do we see them then all over and why do we see them all over and recognize them all the time and they seem to appear everywhere and be everywhere and I, and uh, and that subject that you just touched about about differentiating yourself and being able to reprogram your brain so i found out so imagine when you buy a new car you know, there's the thing that we say when you buy a new brand new car or you just have a baby, you see that everywhere, right? You see your brand of car. Everybody has that brand of car. Or when you want to have a baby or have a baby, everybody seems to have a baby around you. It's just because you you focus your attention on one thing and then your brain, like a ra radar, starts searching for that thing. Same thing for the behavior of being a victim or being a narcissist, that we're going to reproduce that behavior, I think, because we focus on it. Same thing with an addiction or, you know, uh, I've, uh, you know I was a smoker for very long, I drank a lot for very long. Now I'm getting rid of the food uh, uh, addiction as well. And the, the way I see it is, if we force against it, we're more prone to reproduce it because we're fighting against something. So our mind is even more focused in noticing it, reproducing it, finding it, searching for it. Um, you know, the more you don't want to think about food, the more you're going to think about food. The more you don't want to think about narcissism, the more you're prone to thinking about about it and potentially meeting someone who is so the way i <laughs> so if you look at people that teach us uh you know self-help like tony robbins for example who go on a different and and like dr joe uh, joe dispenza as well they switch the they switch the discussion and if you go to a place where you decide who you are and who you are going to be. So the way you can do that is, for example, you know, for example, when uh, Tony Robbins often says is a person that says they're a smoker trying to quit will never end smoking because they believe they're a smoker from their inner, inner self, right? So if you believe that, or if you say I'm a victim or been a narcissist or whatever you come from a position of being that so you anchor your entire being in that and instead to rule program or to completely transform your reality you can position yourself in the being that you want to be but as the being you already are and so you can, we can, because I do it also, list, you know, I've been very, very thin and, and now I'm, I'm really, really overweight. So this morning, for example, I woke up and I said, you're, you know, I'm super thin. So how do I eat? How do I walk? How do I behave now that I am super thin? So that changes instead of fighting against food, it changes the positioning of I don't want to eat that much because I come from the position of being a thin person. And I think that's the same for not attracting narcissists or not behaving nar narcissistically is deciding, well, what is the ideal person I want to be look like? And then wake up in the morning and act accordingly. Yeah, it's uh, the the thing about smoking. It's very interesting because it's almost like in in the eyes of the universe and what it brings you. So what you attract is almost indifferent if you say I'm a smoker or I'm a non-smoker because you are still focused on smoking. So would a non-smoker even define themselves through smoking? They probably wouldn't. Like. They would, if you ask them, do you smoke? They would say, no, I don't smoke. But in their real life, they never ever think of it. It's not part of their, their universe. So they wouldn't think of themselves as a non-smoker and live every day of their life as a non-smoker. It's just 
not part of the reality. So what are you? So that's the, that's the thing. Um, that's the thing uh, because people have to think who they are without even defining themselves comparatively to something that they don't want to be exactly exactly the trouble with that or the 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 hard part about that and uh, when it comes to, to narcissism is that it's very hard so for example if you take smoking as an example um nobody smokes since they are a kid so or like since they are since they really cannot remember in their childhood so they probably started smoking at some point where they can remember when they they started smoking um and even if they smoke for a really long time they can still they know that that's not where they came from that's not how they were since the day they were born and the narcissism especially uh, I, I, I think this is my opinion or my observation uh, many people even who are not aware of any narcissistic influence in their life before uh, this relationship I'm 34 and now I have this uh, narcissistic boyfriend and I have no clue how I attracted him okay but usually there is something and there is some experience that maybe goes so far in childhood where people cannot remember it. And the thing is that these, these are the patterns of um, attachment. So how we, how we um, uh, attach to other people um, and how we relate to other people so uh, these patterns go so far in our childhood that we actually thinking about it now we feel like we were born like that so we cannot really distinguish ourselves from it so we cannot imagine being anything different because we actually don't remember ever being anything different and it's so, again, the, the T story, it's so um, intrinsic in, in everything that we, how we are, how we think, how, how our days are, how we do things, how we feel, how we interact in everything, what we do, how we do it. If we are overachievers or underachievers, it's like everywhere. And it's so, it so much defines our lives that it's impossible and we have never, we don't remember ever experiencing anything different that we, or we never did, that we cannot imagine or even think of something. It's so, you know. I agree with you, but at the same time, um, that comes from any, every self-limiting belief. So if you look at poverty, you know, being, having a, a, a poverty mindset, for example, or sabotage, like I've, you know, I've coached a lot of people and a lot had, for example, poverty mindsets where they would sabotage their financial success all the time because from wherever they couldn't even remember a time that, that put that seed that germinated in their whole being of being into a poverty mindset where they, you know, they sabotage their financial success, but they will speak and act in the poverty mindset, in the lack mindset. So I think any, any mindset is not, you know, and even smokers, I mean, you have much more chances of becoming a smoker when your parents were a smoker because you inhaled already as a baby and you're used to that. So there are, I think, things that are implemented when at birth or during even, even when we're still in, in the mom, mom's womb that germinate and become so true that we don't even think they're self-limiting beliefs. Narcissistic is one of those, but I, but I would generalize that it's, all of them, you know, uh, whether it's not being able to find the right partner in love, whether it is not 
uh, having money, whether it is always being sick or having some kind of illness or narcissistic attractiveness or that I think all of it can be, you know, unlearned, unlearned as soon as we don't want to live it anymore. And the unlearning is the best way to unlearn is to not even consider the person we were yesterday and start fresh saying, this is, you know, what is an abundance mindset? I had to learn the abundance mindset. Like I was in a whole poverty mindset, a lack mindset, you know, because I was raised like that. I was raised that if we saw a car, you know, a super luxurious car, my pa one of my parents would say, oh, of course he must be in the mafia to have a car like that. So, you know, we connect all oh, richness is bad, you know, and things like that. So, and for me, it I really had to, to completely transform the prayer, even the how I drink my tea, if you want to say, it, of, you know, of a person who's in the wealth mindset. So I think it's, and the way I think to do it, and that's my opinion. I mean, the best way is to completely cut, make, you know, a decision. Now I am, and whatever follows the I am, how does that I am behave, think, act, speak to others, relate to others? Who that I am will bring into their life or lock out of their life? Uh, who that I am has its boundaries or no boundaries or so I think we that the person we need to redefine the I am and accord and act according to that new I am and eventually that I am that become that at first seems so fake and so out of our comfort zone becomes our new real personality I don't know if that makes sense yeah, it does make sense. And actually, you, you made me think because um, it's true what you're saying. And uh, the, the truth is that in any kind of mindset, we um, think that there is something outside of us and we, we are oblivious to, to the fact that it's actually inside of us. So it's like you, you have to turn the camera inwards, no? And you have to look you have to uh, look for what is in yourself that is causing that effect, basically. Um, but so I'm, I'm not sure while you were talking, um, there is a, a difference that I'm sensing with this. Uh, by this, I mean with the narcissism, uh, respect to like, if I look at other uh, addictions or, or things that, for example, money or so, so um, things that usually um, have some kind of mindset struggle related to them. Um, there is a difference that I'm sensing, but I'm not completely sure um, even what it was or how to define it. I'm just going to say it as it comes. This is, uh, I think there is something in because when you think about money or any kind of addiction or love or whatever it's something outside of us like literally there is something outside and with the the narcissism this is how i experienced it it's so inside and you are at the same time the good and the bad guy and it's all a play and you are so oblivious to all of that that it's it's immensely hard to think outside of that because literally you have never and probably you have never known anyone because you were looking always from those lenses. So it's like, um, it's, I always said to my clients uh, when, when they would start their, their um, uh, entrepreneurial journey, that when they so they they go out on a field 
and uh, the person preparing them for that says, okay, so there are going to be some obstacles, okay? There is going to be a wall and then there is going to be a hole. So from this, you have to jump here, you have to climb here, you have to go down here. Okay, so they go there and they are ready for the obstacles and they expect, you know, okay, wall, there may be some fence or something like that. So you expect those things that, that you were kind of uh, prepared for, that somebody told you about, and things similar to those. And then you experience more of those. So you are kind of, so your, your uh, perception of what can an obstacle be or how an ob obstacle can look like is um, growing. So it, it's getting, um, you're getting better ideas or of how can an obstacle look like. But the thing is that it's, um, I probably can't curse here, but it's a mind boggling uh, thing um, that I, I think that's the thing that people, that people uh, struggle with is that they, there, there are obstacles that they don't even perceive as, as an obstacle. They don't even think about it as an obstacle because they just like they just never had that experience nobody told them about it nobody around them experienced it it's like n and you are for years you are struggling with something and you don't even realize that it's just an obstacle yeah i agree with you i understand what you're saying um where you would say that there's a differentiator be between having a money uh, lack mindset <coughs> or love lack mindset but I still believe that someone that doesn't attract love or doesn't attract money it comes from a stand an inner standpoint and not an outside standpoint and you would talk to people like you know, I've spoken to thousands of people and there are people that are going to get into an argument to, to, to explain to you why for them, it's never going to happen. Like they're going to fight you to the death to tell you that in their life, it is impossible for them to have money ever. Or it's impossible that they ever find the right person because, and they give you a ton of reasons. But they, they so they are also completely oblivious that it, that they are lying to themselves in that that they don't even see see that it's just an obstacle that they're not locked into that life. Correct. So I I think there are similarities. Anyway, I want to believe there are similarities in the way to get out of it by um, by switching to the possibility that and the belief and the trust that if you switch the inner self to behave and think in a matter in which you want, you know, I always say be the person you are going to be once you have what you want. So to become the person that you, sh you want to become basically, but to be it now. And in that now you will see changes in the type of people you will attract and your type of behaviors as well. Because let's say you study, and I think it takes a lot of studying to understand. So let's, or, also gather people around and hang out with people who have amazing relationships, right? Who, who don't even know or don't know or actually know what narcissistic abuse is, but never have it in their life, right? They have this magical relationship and study them and say, well, you know, and then take, behave sl much slower in our life so that we have time to every step to make sure we make the step of a person that's not a victim or not a narcissist and just say, you know, how does a person that 
always lived in the a beautiful relationship, love and care and happiness, drink their tea. You know, that's how I'm going to drink, right? Or, uh, you know, and I've noticed, like, the more I pay attention to that, like, who am I? If, if I am a person that's not a victim, not a narcissist, who am I? And then I, I kind of notice that I'm acting differently. You know, a little bit little. It's not a big change, but it's little. It's enough to, you know, to be happy and say, well, this action I conquered, I wasn't a victim, or this action I conquered, I wasn't a bitch. You know, <laughs> it was just, it was normal, right? I don't yeah. know what to think. I think it's, it is a process, right? It's a long journey. Yeah, that's 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 the the process that I that I started a month and a half ago. That like exactly what you were saying, uh, and what I've what I've experienced and um, learned until now is that it's actually uh, well. I I started and it seemed like as I explained before, it seemed like I have no clue. Who, who who I am how to how it's funny because when you when somebody tells you to think of something that you have never thought you don't know what to think because it's not it's it's not in your you cannot think of something that you don't have in your mind but yeah so, I agree but at the same time you can take notes so the way I do it is um, I observe and even like even through movies, I'm gonna even if it's fake, it doesn't matter. I observe behaviors that I feel this looks normal or this looks loving or this looks like the person I aim to be. And then let me let me act like that. Let me fake it, fake it till I make it. Let me act like that just for a day. Yeah, what, what I have been uh, practicing is actually, <clears throat> I believe that this is, uh, I think it very much depends on the person, but uh, I, what I can relate to and what works for me the best is to kind of remove, um, remove everything because I believe that, you know, in the, in the beginning and in the end, we are all the same and uh and it's beautiful and uh as i said we are all love and we are all there is no we don't even have to say that we are worthy there is no one worthy we are and it's and and it's amazing so i think uh and this is a feeling that i that i experience in in meditation so that's that was my way that, that was my way how i decided to to um what i decided to kind of explore more for the past month is to see who i am when i and and accept that and really um with these new realizations from the past few months to really um allow it allow myself and um and kind of let go and and allow myself to to sink into that and to allow it to become me right now mm. you know um so not to not to have to be anything from what i've learned until now and not to have to think from my brain which is very limited what is possible and what is healthy or even how i want to be why wouldn't I be what I am? Not who I am, what I am. And then when I come back, I can still use my brain and think, okay, now with this new energy that I feel and with this kind of, uh, you know, clean slate where, where I am right now, now I can think what I want and have no fear that what I decide or what I envision for myself that it's um, not going to be healthy for me or, or for anyone else, actually. Uh, so with the, with the knowing, because there is a feeling that you cannot miss. So when, you, when, when the thing is right, 
it feels right and nobody can miss it it's you just yeah you but cautious my friend cautious because addiction and comfort zone feel right so cautious because comfort zone feels right when you're used to a pattern it's gonna it feels feel no it feels familiar but it doesn't feel right okay yeah i get what you're saying it's uh, yeah but i i think it's a good it's a good thing that you said it because uh, you know people who are watching this can uh, can really fall into that trap of confusing the the two and it's very important to because the safety feels right because it's safe and no and known you're right. It is known, not necessarily right, but a lot of people won't know the difference between feeling as it's right. Because again, what is right, what is not right, when you never, you never known what is right, it's difficult to know this is right, right? Like in a relationship, how do I know that, oh, I'm not putting enough uh, barrier or enough protection uh, or you know i'm i'm giving away too much or you know i'm 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 becoming a victim when i never knew anything else it it seems yeah. Yeah. like you don't know what is right what is not right i think a good method for that is uh to to kind of uh model what you have experienced in some other um aspect of your life so for example, it, I mean, maybe it sounds ridiculous, but it, it, it works pretty well. So if you think, okay, I have no clue how, how it feels when it feels right. And then you think, okay, when did I feel that something is right? And maybe it was when you found your apartment. So when you walked in and you walked in five of them, but there was that one that really felt right. That's the feeling of how, how it feels right. How it feels when it feels right. Or you picked up five books in, in the bookstore and one was speaking to you. And that was the right one for you, for you to read in that moment. It, it doesn't have to be a, a, a big thing or a you know, big example, but you can take that model and put it on any other aspect of your life and know that that is the feeling that you are chasing. So that is the feeling that you are going to experience when the thing feels right, even if it's unknown. So even if it's unfamiliar, it won't feel familiar. It doesn't necessarily feel comfortable. Maybe it feels uncomfortable. Maybe there is also some fear involved, but it feels right. And you cannot deny it because you feel it in I your bones. I love it. That's a great, um, that's a great um, analogy and that's a great advice. So definitely, um, you're right. That's, that's a great advice. Um, I, I'm going to set us to speak again, maybe in six months and see how we've both evolved through this. Uh, my goal now is, uh, is to go back to a go back to a very healthy um, body with a very healthy eating um, protocol um, and very fun at the same time. Um, so that's my goal for the next six months. <laughs> so that when we meet, we'll see if I achieve that goal at least. Um, and then, yeah, and, and in the meantime, um, what, I, what I'm going to do is um, if you have a website or you have some way of people finding you um you say you are a coach for entrepreneurs so maybe some of the people who are watching need advice or who knows need coaching on different levels may reach out to you so if it's okay i'll just put you a link to where people can find you and reach out to you um, and I thank you. I thank you. It's always such a pleasure. Uh, I love it because, it, you know, it's deep conversations. And I mean, I learn and you learn and it's like we, we get somewhere. So it, we all, we re reveal some things that maybe we're not 
clear on. So I, I'm thankful for having you uh, again here. Uh, it's very, very nice. So thanks. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, the pleasure is all mine. Yeah, so thank you so much. And again, we'll set up something in six months. I wanna call up uh, to everybody watching that you can also come join our Facebook group. We're always there. So we can, you know, you can chat with any of us there, ask questions, start conversations, whether we agree or disagree on the conversations. Um, most, I think 99.9% are very, very supportive. Uh, we have a, com a loving community, uh, a very safe community. So please join our Facebook group. The link will also be um, <clears throat> inside the, the description of this video. Of course, subscribe to the channel, share the video so that more people uh, learn what is narcissistic abuse. Um, are you addicted without even knowing it? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't even know that they have narcissistic abusers around them. So, you know, hopefully this will kind of open up the eyes of a lot of people and go like, oh my goodness. Oh yeah, I have, you know, the other day I was speaking to someone and telling them about narcissistic abuse and they went, oh my gosh, but my cousin is exactly like you described. And so that was like, oh, eye opening because they, fit, they felt good knowing that they were not the crazy one thinking, oh, so it is something that actually exists out there. So hopefully we'll bring more and more of this education to more and more people. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you and, uh, and talk to you soon.